Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. I uh, want to talk to you today, it's July 2019, about kitchen remodel, bath remodels. Um, should I update my wiring while I'm ready to do my cabinets? Um, a lot of money is spent on your granite, your cabinets, your flooring, your drywall, your mud, your texture, your paint, uh, your appliances. Uh, sometimes the plumbing. Most of the time people don't realize that the electrical, the plumbing are some of the most important parts of it. Once you cover it up, you spend a lot of money not to be able to get to it. So uh, if you're out in South Colorado or mid Colorado, Denver up to Castle Rock, a lot of those areas basically state that once you go down to the drywall, just take it off and rewire. Should I get a permit? Well, if you're moving stuff all the way around that kitchen, you're supposed to get a permit. Uh, have I gotten a permit always on that? Sometimes I can't, but most of the times that we try to make sure the permits are pulled by those homeowners. We can, but we have to attach to it, and you can't just go pulling a permit and adding us there without our knowledge. Um, but when you go in to do a kitchen remodel, keep in mind that there are codes that say that you have to update if you're touching your wires. If you're adding circuitry, if you're extending the circuitry, oh, I'm just taking out a wall, it's pretty simple. It's just this, it's just a couple things. It's, it's really quick and easy. I could do it myself, but I decided I might just hire it out. With those comments, somehow in people's mind, it becomes a 45 minute HTD TV like disconnect. Like you guys assume that it's a very simple thing. Look, a lot of those guys and those uh, sitcoms, I call them, but more or less their shows on, uh, I won't even mention them, but they don't really show you what they go through in the electrical, plumbing, and HVAC side. It's behind the wall. Really, all you see is the before, the interview, a little of the mid and the after, but you do sure see, oh, by the way, I found a bunch of surprises. Keep in mind that when you're doing this, um, you want to avoid that surprise later once the drywall's up. For example, I knew a customer and she sold her house, loved it. And then I said to her, well, we could do a simple home inspection because I know you and I trust you and it would be about this amount for an hour, you know, plus the trip. And uh, she didn't want to, she gets and buys her brand new home and she has, yeah, granite, cabinets, gorgeous kitchen, no doubt, everything was beautiful. The time I was done with the service call after she bought it, a month later, she had two circuits serving the whole kitchen. Okay, so the, the range was gas, uh, and then it was a smaller kitchen, but everything, including the microwave, fridge, and counter outlets were all on two circuits. Could not get to it later either. It was a bungalow style, low roof, okay. So basically in a nutshell, um, she was in tears. And from below in the basement, it was finished. So there was a lot of damage to get it redone. I call it lipstick on a pig. But in this scenario of the house, we had to update. This is a 1950s home. Here are all our breakers that, not all of them, but most of them. These circuits were all shared. He had issues of living room with a disposal and the dishwasher together, the fridge tripping with the kitchen and the microwave turning on, and then the living room is affected. All of these are dedicated now to different locations. Why is that important? Well, I'll show you why. In this scenario, it was easier for him to pull drywall and he wanted it fresh, which made better sense. A lot of guys want to cut half the drywall. Is it a big deal? Can't you get to the rest? Let's just make it a real common sense. Does it look like I can get through there to that area, especially with foam? Or there's just a packed insulation they don't want to suck out. If I were crawling up through there and putting my head, could I get any new feeder wires to this corner? No, I could not. Well, you could go through the garage. No, I cannot. There's a firewall. Even a 1950s home, they had a firewall. So all of the new circuits go into the back of this panel. This right here is my sub feed going to the older panel, which we labeled. Okay. So if you're looking for a video, say, do I have to add new wires? Yes. All these are new wires. All these are ex existing wires relocated though. Okay. And the old armor cable that you saw, which I have barely a couple things in the house, they're just typically switch legs I can't get to. Those all came out. So looking at this house, as you walk in, a lot of it is a plan and layout. Can I get to stuff? Can you make adequate splices? Yes, you can, but they have to be above the insulation. 
If they put in a lot of insulation, which I don't think he's going to because this is completely foamed, I wish I could have got that higher, but that was difficult. So hopefully the electrician on his belly later could find that, but I listed and labeled everything. So with this headlamp, you'll see I have a splice. A lot of splicing is not done there. A lot of it was done like you're supposed to, in and out of the box. We do have some low voltage LED lighting coming in. Okay. If you're doing that, you have to find a good location. I don't try to find a cabinet, if I can. This is the garage. He doesn't care what it looks like, it's just a garage. We're putting a three gang cover plate and we'll list it LED. This is my transformer, my primary, my secondary switch from over to here. That's where you wanted to switch. So again, a lot of you are saying, do I have to update my wiring? If you have older wires and they're having issues in the box, and we come out as an estimate and I know what type of house you have, and I have this going on in the light boxes. Yes, you do. So you better budget this. A lot of the times people do not budget. You have to arc fault your circuits that are 120 volt, 15 and 20 amp rated in kitchens now. Even the refrigerator, dishwasher, disposal. You have to GFCI all the outlets. I'll do another video on that, except for the 240. Give it time, they're starting to do 240 in, the, in code 2020 coming up in six months for your dryers. It will be in time, they'll be doing an arc fault dual combination 240 volt breaker, probably for your range and cooktop and wall oven. So a lot of this, this is a very small kitchen. I have kitchens that are wire that are four or five times this size, but this is a small bungalow house, but he did it correct. So there's other statements of code on how to place it, what type of ampacity, what size wire, Yada, 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 I've gotten into that before. I can do more videos on it. But again, yes, I would anticipate budgeting this. If I quote pricing online or on the YouTube, I always get a criticism from Tennessee or some other put up town. So no offense to you, but I, I lived out there. Um, but so yeah, I just would prefer, you know, anything needs to be asked, we can talk to you on the phone, um, assuming you live in my area, but I don't talk to people on other states about pricing because they have their own pricing and their own contractors. And Colorado is a very demanded state. Um, so it is basically probably not gonna be the same price as some place in the backwoods of, of uh, you know, I won't say Tennessee, but another area. <laughs> but so guys, so that's it. Uh, hopefully this video will help you out and to see a little bit more what to anticipate as you got your kitchen.